Hey, welcome back. My name is Sushant Sudish, and I am your trainer for this AZ One Hundred Four Azure Administrator Associate Certification Examination Course. We are at Module Nine, which is all about serverless computing. In this lesson, we're going to learn about Azure App Services. Let's have a look at the things what we're going to learn on this lesson. We will learn about what is Azure App Service and what are the reasons for you to use Azure App Service. Then I will take you through the portal to show you how to create an app service and what is continuous deployment. We will learn about deployment slot and creating deployment slot as well. And in terms of how do you secure your app service, and we will learn about how to add a custom domain name to your applications. And after you create your app service, so it is important for us to understand how to back up an app service. And monitor your app service using application insights. When I'm explaining about each of these topics, I will take you back and forth between the presentation and the Azure portal, so you exactly know what I am talking about. So, without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Azure App Service brings together everything you need to create websites, mobile backends, and web apps. And web APIs for any platform or device. Applications run and scale with ease on both Windows and Linux-based environments. So within Azure App Services, there are many deployment choices. So before we move forward, let's understand the reasons to use Azure App Service. The first reason is Azure App Service provide multiple languages and frameworks. So App Service has first class support for ASP.NET, Java, Ruby, Node.js, PHP or Python. You can also run PowerShell and other scripts or executables as background services. The second reason to use App Service is DevOps optimization. You can set up continuous integration and deployment with Azure DevOps, GitHub, Bitbucket Docker Hub or Azure Container Registry. And you can promote updates through test and staging environments as well. You can manage your apps in App Service by using Azure PowerShell or cross platform command line interface. Another reason to use App Service is global scale with high availability. You can scale up or out manually or automatically. We have seen an example of this in the last video. You can host your apps anywhere in the Microsoft Global Data Center infrastructure, and the App Service SLA promises high availability. And the fourth reason to use the Azure App Service is connections to SaaS platforms and on-premises data. You can choose from more than 50 connectors for enterprise systems such as SAP, SaaS services such as Salesforce, and internet services such as Facebook. Another reason for using App Service is the application templates. You can choose from an extensive list of application templates in the Azure Marketplace such as WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, etc. Let's understand one more reason to use App Service before we go and learn how to create an App Service. App Service run on serverless code. You can run a code snippet or script on demand without having to explicitly provision or manage infrastructure and pay only for the compute time your code actually uses. So please note that AZ104 Azure Administrator Certification focus only on implementation tasks, not in depth. So let's learn about creating an app service. When creating an app service, you will need to specify a resource group and a service plan. Let me quickly take you to the Azure portal and show you exactly how it is been done. I bought my Azure portal now. You can search for app service in the global search box and select the app services. As you can see that I don't have any app services at the moment. Click on add app services. Pick the subscription where you want to host the app service. Create a new resource group or select an existing resource group. 
and give a name to your app service. The name must be unique and will be used to locate your app. You can map a custom domain name if you prefer to use that instead. Then to publish, the app service can host either a code or a Docker container. The software stack can run the app, including the language and SDK versions. For Linux app and custom container apps, you can also set up an optional startup command or file. Choices include .NET Core, .NET Framework, Node.js, PHP, Python, and Ruby. Various versions of each are available. Then you have your operating system choice. It can be either Linux or Windows. And then choose your region. Under region, your choice will affect app service plan availability. So I'm going to click on review and create. After the validation, you click on create. So our deployment has been completed. I'm going to click on go to resource. So once the app service is created, additional configuration information is available. So I'm going to go under settings and click on configuration. I can connect to my app service using this URL. So certain configuration setting can be included in this developer's code or configured in the app service. Let's understand about continuous deployment. The Azure portal provides out of the box continuous integration and deployment with Azure DevOps, GitHub, Bitbucket, FTP, or a local Git repository on your deployment machine. You can connect your web app with any of the MO sources and app services will do the rest for you by auto-syncing code and any future changes on the code into the web app. That compiles your secure code. Furthermore, with Azure DevOps, you can define your own build and release processes that compiles your source code, runs the test, build a release and finally deploys the release into your web app every time you commit the code. All that happens implicitly without any need to intervene. So when it comes to continuous deployment, there are two deployment methods, automated and manual. So let me give you an idea about what is an automated deployment. Automated deployment or continuous integration is a process used to push out new features and bug fixes in a fast and repetitive pattern with minimal impact on end users. Azure supports automated deployment directly from several sources. Some of the options available are Azure DevOps, GitHub, and Bigbucket. And then there is a manual deployment as well. There are a few options that you can use to manually push your code to Azure. Some of the ways you can do that are using Git, CLI, Zip Deploy, Visual Studio, or FTPS. Let's learn about the deployment slots. When you deploy your web app, web app on Linux, mobile backend, or API app to Azure App Service, you can use a separate deployment slot instead of a default production slot when you are running in the standard, premium, or isolated app service plan tier. So let me show you how to access a deployment slot. I'm on my Azure portal. You can directly go to your app services by clicking on this or you can search for app services on the global search box. Select the app services. If you don't have an app service, create a new one by clicking on add. And we have talked about how to create an app service plan and app services in the previous video. I'm going to select this demo app service and under the deployment, you can find deployment slots. These deployment slots are live apps with their own host names. App content and configuration elements can be swapped between two deployment slots, including the production slot. Let's understand a couple of deployment slots advantages. You can validate app changes in a staging deployment slot before swapping it with a production slot and deploying an app to a slot first and swapping it into production ensures that all instances of the slot are warmed up before being swapped into production. This eliminates downtime when you deploy your app. And after you swap, the slot with previously staged app 
now has the previous production app. AutoSwap streamlines Azure DevOps scenarios where you want to deploy your app continuously with zero cold starts and zero downtime for customers of the app. When AutoSwap is enabled from a slot into the production, every time you push the code change to that slot, App Service automatically swaps the app into the production after it's warmed up in the source slot. Please note that the auto swap isn't currently supported in the web apps on Linux. Let's have a look at how to create a deployment slot. You can click on Add Slot. The new deployment slot can be empty or cloned. When you clone a configuration from another deployment slot, the clone configuration is editable. Some configuration elements follow the content across a swap, whereas other configuration elements stay in the same slot after a swap. I'm going to click close. You can see that I have two slots running as well. This is where I would be able to define the traffic percentage. Let's understand how can you secure an app service. Azure App Service provides built-in authentication and authorization support. So you can sign in users and access data by writing minimal or no code in your web app, API, and mobile backend, and also Azure Functions. Please note that you are not required to use Azure App Service for authentication and authorization. Many web frameworks are bundled with security features, and you can use them if you like. So let me show you how it works. I'm going to go back to my Azure portal. Within Azure portal, select an app service. And I'm going to select the one which we created for the demo. If you scroll down under settings, you would be able to find authentication and authorization. By default, it is turned off. I'm going to turn on. So the authentication and authorization module runs in the same sandbox as your application code. When it is enabled, Every incoming HTTP request passes through it before being handled by your application code. This module handles several things for your apps. This will authenticate users with specific provider. It can validate stores and refreshes token. Uh, this can manage the authenticated session. And it can inject identity information into request headers as well. And some of the authorization behavior we need to be aware of is one, allow anonymous request, no action. This option refers authorization of unauthenticated traffic to your application code. For authenticated requests, App Service also passes along authentication information in an HTTP headers. This option provides more flexibility in handling anonymous requests. It lets you present multiple sign-in providers to your users. Please remember, restricting access in this way applies to all calls to your app. Let's understand about custom domain names. I'm going to take you back to the portal one more time. And under settings of the app service, you can find custom domain names. As you can see that I don't have any custom domain names verified at the moment. So when you create a web app, Azure assigns it to a subdomain of azurewebsite.net. For example, if your web app is named as 104 App Service, the URL is called 104appservice.azurewebsites.net. Azure also assigns a virtual IP address. For a prediction web app, you may want users to see a custom domain name. After obtaining your domain, and creating your DNS record, you can use the portal to validate the custom domain name and add it to your web app. But please make sure you test it before making it alive. Let's talk about how can you backup an app service. The backup and restore feature in Azure App Service lets you easily create app backups manually or on a schedule. So let me show you where you can turn on the backup. I'm still on my app service. I'm going to escape out of this. And under settings, you can find backups. You can configure the backups to be retained up to an indefinite amount of time. And you can restore the app to a snapshot 
of a previous state by overwriting the existing app or restoring to another app as well. So when you turn on the backup, what gets backed up? The app service can back up app configuration, file content, database connected to your app, to an Azure storage account and container that you have configured your app to use. Some of the consideration you have to keep in mind while configuring the backup is the backup and restore feature requires the app service plan to be standard tier or a premium tier. You can configure backup manually or on a schedule as well. And you need an Azure storage account and container in the same subscription as app that you want to backup. Full backups are the default. If a file is on the site but not in the backup, it gets deleted. And backups can be up to 10 GB of app and database content. Let's understand how can you monitor your app service. Application Insights is a feature of Azure Monitor. And you can use Application Insights to monitor your live applications. It will automatically detect performance anomalies and includes powerful analytics tools to help you diagnose issues and to understand what users actually do with your app. It's designed to help you continuously improve performance and usability. It works for apps on a wide variety of platforms including .NET, Node.js and Java WE. You can use Application Insight to monitor application hosted on-premises, hybrid or any other public cloud as well. It integrates with your DevOps process and has connection points to a variety of development tools. It can monitor and analyze telemetry from mobile apps by integrating with Visual Studio App Center. Application Insights has plenty of features and it is aimed at the development team to help you understand how your app is performing and how it is being used. So that concludes the Azure App Service lesson. We are still on module 9 which is all about serverless computing. In the next lesson, we're going to learn about container services. So I will see you in the next video. Till then, take care.